This is the MS-20. Here is Oscillator 1's triangle wave. 32 feet. 16 feet. 8 feet. And 4 feet. Here is Oscillator 1's sawtooth wave at those same footages. 16 feet. 32 feet. 8 feet. And 4 feet. Here is Oscillator 1's square wave at those same footages. 16 feet. 32 feet, 8 feet, and 4 feet. And of course we have the noise waveform, which sounds the same at all footages. Oscillator 1's square wave has the ability to have its pulse width adjusted. Uh, here is a full 50% square wave. And here is the pulse width being adjusted. Since it's not marked, I don't know the exact percent it is. It can be diminished all the way to the point where it is 0%, where you get no noise, of course. And here is Oscillator 2's saw wave at 16 feet. At 8 feet. At four feet and two feet. Here is the square wave. Uh, this square wave on oscillator two, its pulse width cannot be adjusted, so it is just a straight 50% square wave. Let's start at 16 feet and eight feet. Four feet and two feet. We also have a pulse wave whose width can also not be adjusted. It's just a slightly smaller percentage of square wave, and it sounds like this eight feet, four feet, and two feet. The pitch of oscillator 2 can be adjusted. So that it can be a different pitch from oscillator 1. We have portamento. Level 10 of which has this amount of time. Turned all the way up. At 5. At 2. Also we have the master tune. a whole step in either direction. We have the VCO mixer, which allows you to set the various levels of the different oscillators. Um, here's oscillator one. Set out a square wave. And here's oscillator two, also set at a square wave. And out of tune.
course, you can mix and match footages and waveforms. <laughs> some knob moving, some manual knob moving going on. You can have pulse width modulation. Uh, it's not the most ideal form of pulse width modulation, but it's all that Korg provided for you because they thought you wouldn't need it because there were two oscillators. Oh well. They did some other things right though, so it's, it's a trade-off. <laughs> Oscillator 2, we have the ring setting, which is a ring modulator type effect. Which might not sound very interesting, but to get it to sound interesting, you have to mess with Oscillator 2's pitch knob. Changing waveforms and pitch settings will have different effects. Changing pulse width on oscillator 1 will also have interesting effects. folks at Korg um, uh, thought that you were only going to need to be able to modulate both oscillators at once. I don't know why they thought this. It'd be kind of nice if you could modulate them separately. You can modulate them separately using the patch bay, but I'll show you that later. Right now I'm going to show you the massive frequency modulation section, which is right here. Um, the top knob is the MG T external knob, and I'm tempted to just leave it at that and just let you figure it out. No. Okay. Basically, if there's nothing plugged into the patch bay, this knob designates how much the modulation generator is going to affect the pitch of both voltage controlled oscillators. So here's what it's going to sound like. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to show you what the modulation generator does right now in the midst of the frequency modulation section because it's relevant. So I'm sorry to jump out of order here and dive straight for the modulation generator. But that's what I'm going to do. Okay, here we go. We got this frequency modulation of both oscillators happening. <coughs> to demonstrate that it's both oscillators, I'm going to make oscillator 2's pitch different. Okay. <coughs> What we have there is the modulation generator set to a triangle wave at about two as far as frequency is concerned. So let's mess around with that and see what sort of sounds we get. That is the modulation generator at its topmost frequency. Of course, I have the modulation, the frequency modulation all the way up, which is why it's so, um, Modulate-y. It's a new word I just made up. Um, I'm going to turn that down. So you don't have to have, like, complete massive, you know. 